We are given the implicit equation and asked to determine dy dx. We begin by differentiating both sides of the equation with respect to x. Notice on the left, because we have y times the sine of xy, we will have to apply the product rule as well as the chain rule. So to begin, we have the first function of y times the derivative of the second function with respect to x, which is the derivative of sine xy with respect to x, and then plus the second function of sine xy times the derivative of the first function, which is the derivative of y with respect to x. Equals on the right side, the derivative of y to the sixth with respect to x is six times y to the fifth times dy dx. Notice we have an extra factor of dy dx because we're differentiating a y term with respect to x, which means we differentiate with respect to y and then have an extra factor of dy dx because of the chain rule. And then minus the derivative of five with respect to x, which is zero. And now let's go back to the left and determine the derivatives. We have y times the derivative of sine xy with respect to x. Notice how we'll have to apply the chain rule when differentiating sine xy where the inner function, which we often refer to as u, is xy. And when finding u prime, we will have to apply the product rule. So the derivative of sine u with respect to x is equal to cosine u times u prime, which in our case is cosine of xy, and then times the derivative of xy with respect to x, which again requires the product rule, where we have the first function x times the derivative of the second function y with respect to x. The derivative of y with respect to x is dy dx. And then we have plus the second function of y times the derivative of the first function with respect to x, the derivative of x with respect to x is just one. And then we have plus sine xy times the derivative of y with respect to x, which is one times dy dx, or just dy dx. And on the right, we still have six y to the fifth times dy dx. And now we need to work on solving the equation for dy dx by first getting all of the dy dx terms on the same side. Before we do this though, let's go ahead and distribute here on the left to eliminate the parentheses. So here we have y times cosine xy times x dy dx, which gives us xy cosine xy dy dx. And then we have y cosine xy times y which gives us plus y squared times cosine of xy. And now we need to get all of the dy dx terms on one side so that we can then factor out dy dx and solve for dy dx. Notice right now we have one, two, three dy dx terms. Two of them are already on the left, so let's subtract six y to the fifth dy dx on both sides of the equation, which on the left will give us x y cosine x y dy dx plus sine x y dy dx and then minus six y to the fifth dy dx. And let's also subtract y squared cosine xy on both sides of the equation, which gives us on the right negative y squared cosine xy. The next step is to factor out dy dx on the left, which gives us dy dx times the quantity xy cosine xy plus sine xy minus six y to the fifth on the right, we still have negative y squared cosine xy. The last step to solve for dy dx is to divide both sides of the equation by xy cosine xy plus sine xy minus six y to the fifth.
Simplifying on the left, this quotient is equal to one. We now have dy dx equals negative y squared cosine xy divided by the quantity xy cosine xy plus sine xy minus six y to the fifth. I hope you found this helpful.